Here are a few games that many people play but cannot win. Number 9. House Always Wins Casinos all over the world have great shows, great food, and great entertainment overall. Don't think of casinos as places that give you a great amount of money. A lot of people dream of beating the casino, but it is just not possible. In the long run, anyways. Someone may be able to have a big winning night, but they're not going to be doing that night in and night out. U.S. commercial gaming revenue topped $40 billion for the first time ever in 2017 at $40.28 billion, with states receiving a record $9.23 billion from gaming taxes alone. There's a reason why and how that happens. There are exactly zero games a casino offers where the edge is on the player side. Well, maybe one. And that's blackjack. But the player edge is possible only if you play perfectly and count cards, but you'd get kicked out by the casino anyways. Math is the universal language, and it never lies. The house advantage varies for each game, and with betting limits in place, that ensures that over time, the casino won't lose money against gamblers. If you're going to play a game for entertainment, play a game like Baccarat, because even if you have no clue what you're doing, there's not much edge to give up. For example, if you don't have a clue what to do in blackjack, you could be giving up more than 20% in edge. The house advantage obviously doesn't mean that you can't win on any given night, but it does mean that the more you play, the more the math works against you, and over time, it's a losing proposition where the losses just keep on coming. Number 8. The Status Game Trying to show off to someone else how smart they are or how much money they have is a losing proposition. However, it's ingrained in human nature and showing off status back in the day meant a lot more for survival than it does today. A famous study in behavioral economics showed that if someone given a choice between earning $50,000 a year with everyone else earning $25,000 or earning $100,000 while others earned $200,000, the majority of people would choose the former. Why? It's simple. People are wired to care what others think about them. Competing with other people and needing to win is an evolutionary instinct. Now, we're not saying to not compete here or not to work hard. However, we're just saying that there's really no point in trying to impress other people or really care about what other people think. With the way the modern world is today, we don't need to play the status game in order to survive. In fact, trying to signal to other people that we have money or that we're smarter than them just breeds jealousy and envy. The sad fact is that most people don't want to see other people do better than them. The worst part is when someone actually doesn't have the money for the lifestyle they want to portray. They go into debt to live in a mansion, drive a luxury car, and wear luxury clothes they can't afford just to try to portray a lifestyle that's not real for other people to see. The thing that most people forget or maybe don't realize is that everyone essentially just cares about themselves, no matter what they say. No one really cares about the luxury purse or car that someone else has. When someone plays the status game, there's no winning. There's always someone who's going to have a nicer car, make more money, or be much smarter, just as examples. Ultimately, we should just stop trying to impress other people and instead only do things because it's ultimately what we want to do. Number seven, just a little bit. A little debt won't hurt, will it? That's how it starts. Credit card debt game is a game that's just not worth playing and it is a losing proposition. There's something about debt that tempts you to keep spending even when you can't afford the payments. Part of the allure of debt is the fact that you can get the emotional high from buying new things now without having to deal with the pain of parting with money. But anytime you take out a loan or charge something on your credit card, you're borrowing from the money you hope to earn in the future. Basically, you're just screwing your future self. And we haven't gotten to the high interest rates. Let's say you buy something worth uh, $2,000 on your credit card at 11% interest and only make the minimum payment. By the time you completely pay off the debt, you'll end up paying more than $3,400, which is $1,400 more than the actual cost. That's just one example. The only time to use credit cards is to accumulate airline points or get cash back from your purchases and having the ability to pay off the debt in full each month. That way, at least it's almost like getting paid to spend money on necessary purchases. Essentially, if you can't pay cash for something, that means you cannot afford it. Number six, left versus right. We've all been there. We've all spent a little too much time going back and forth with some internet troll whose sole purpose is to make someone mad. You've most likely spent some amount of time arguing online with someone you just couldn't believe was incapable of accepting the truth. That may have been because they were susceptible to something called the backfire effect. The thing is, we're not self-aware enough to realize it could be happening to us as well. 
We have a tendency to believe things even more when our beliefs are challenged. The basic idea comes from how we handle negative information versus positive information. A thousand positive remarks can slip by unnoticed, but one phrase of you suck can linger in someone's head for days. One hypothesis as to why this and the backfire effect happens is that someone spends much more time considering the information they disagree with than they do with the information they accept. The thing is, no one's opinion has changed, no matter how much wasted breaths they've wasted. We all see things differently, and sometimes the truth can be real for both parties. You guys remember the Yanni or Laurel phenomenon, right? Or what about the black and blue dress or the white and gold dress? Those are examples when reality is perceived differently. When was the last time we managed to get someone to change their political belief anyway? Well, the real question is, what's there really to gain, even if we manage to change that person's belief? Arguing online over politics is a game that no one wins. Number five, AI taking over. Back in 1996, IBM's Deep Blue famously beat Garry Kasparov at chess, becoming the first computer to defeat a human world champion. In another round the same year, IBM's Deep Blue chess computer lost to Garry Kasparov. In the 1997 rematch, following some software tweaks, and ironically, maybe thanks to a very fateful software bug, Deep Blue won. Over the next few years, humans and computers traded blows. Eventually, by 2005, 2006, computer chess programs were solidly in the lead. Today's best chess programs can easily beat out the world's best human chess players, even when they're run on fairly conventional hardware, a modern multi-core CPU is just fine. As computers began to clearly outstrip human chess players, there was little point in continuing to pitch them against each other. As a result, there are now computer-only chess leagues where the top chess programs play against each other for all eternity, or at least until the guy running the league turns his computer off. Hey, maybe one day some supercomputer will be able to solve the game of chess. We're not betting on a human to be able to do that. Number four, Pipe Dream. Most people would think that playing for the $700 million jackpot is a no-brainer. However, plenty of financial professionals say it's never worth it to play the lottery. Technically, yes, there are times when it's a positive, expected value situation to play the lottery. Even though there's a lot to be gained, in general, playing the lottery is still a bad decision. Even if it's positive, EV to play, it's still a really losing proposition. Odds depends on which lottery you play, but hitting a big jackpot are pretty long odds. For example, the odds of winning a recent Powerball drawing in Tennessee was 1 in 292.2 million. To put this in perspective, you have a 1 in 2.32 million chance of getting taken out by lightning, a 1 in 3.4 million chance of dying after coming into contact with a venomous animal or plant, and a 1 in 10 million chance of getting struck by falling airplane parts. Most people would agree the risk of any of these events actually happening to them is pretty slim. Still not convinced? put it in a more illustrated way. If there was a giveaway for a new home to just one person and everybody in the six most populated states in the United States entered, that would equal someone's chance of winning the lottery. Really, for almost everyone except the lucky few, playing the lottery is just a losing proposition. Number three, going meta. Have you guys ever heard of the game? We're about to meta on you guys here. Apparently everyone is playing the game, whether they know it or not. The game is a mental game where the objective is to avoid thinking about the game itself. Thinking about the game means you lose, which then must be announced. Does any of this make sense? There are three rules to the game. The first rule is everybody in the world who knows about the game is playing the game. A person cannot refuse to play the game. Apparently, playing the game doesn't require consent to play, and no one can ever stop playing. The second rule is whenever someone thinks about the game, that person loses. The third rule is once you lose, losses have to be announced. This can be done verbally with a phrase such as, I just lost the game, or in any other way, for example, through social media. Does any of this make sense yet? We're really just amazed that there's a game out there where it involves not thinking about the game. What's there to gain by playing or even acknowledging this game? Have any of you guys heard about or played the game before? Number two, rock, paper, scissors. Ah, uh, good old rock, paper, scissors. The classic game played to break ties. Interestingly enough, there's a robot made by Japanese researchers that plays rock, paper, scissors. The fact that it can actually play against human opponents is already enough. However, it can also win 100% of the time. There's no way to win against this robot. In reality, the robot is kind of cheating. 
The robot doesn't really win by the actual rules of the game. That's because the robot wins by watching and throwing after it sees what you do first, but it does it fast enough for us not to be able to tell what's going on. There are three strategies that can produce a 100% win record, but they all basically boil down to using a high-speed camera and human beating electronic reflexes to identify the oncoming shape of the opponent's hand and then play the corresponding move to beat it. Just the angle of the wrist or early movement of the fingers is enough to give it away what move the human is headed for. The worst strategy produced a winning move about 0.02 seconds after the human's move, but in all cases, the robot is technically waiting to see the opponent's move before deciding on its own. Some people call that cheating. Some people call it superior reflexes. This is why the robot famously never loses ever. The game's already rigged. Number one, don't worry, be happy. Perseverance and tenacity are only good qualities when the objective you're working hard to achieve is actually attainable. There's a lot in life you just can't change. It's nice and inspirational and all to think one person could actually change the world, but some things are just bigger than all of us. We can definitely make a difference in the world around us. That's not a problem. We just have to be able to control what we can control and not worry about anything out of our control. The key to dealing with something that's causing us stress is like this. Is there something we can do about it? If yes, then immediately figure the steps we need to do to fix the situation and then do it. If we cannot, then there's no point in worrying about it. Creating anxiety from worrying about the outcome of the situation when there's nothing we can do about it, it just doesn't make sense. Here's what's next. 